winning. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, all right. It's all about tech. It's all about tech. So look, Andrew, there's this issue about Zuckerberg, and we're wondering whether he 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 flim flammed Congress, um, and whether they're going to do anything, and um, if they do anything or he does anything, is going to be sufficient to give us comfort. Okay. What do you think? Well, first of all, I don't think Congress knew anything about what he does. Um, I don't. I think it's so big, and and the amount of data and the the industry itself has moved so quickly. I don't know if Mark knows what they were doing in, in all reality. Um, was he ill-intended? No. Uh, I mean, I think people have been told for a long time not to share their data, to know what they share, to know why. Uh, I think we have a thing that nothing's ever free, right, to be aware of those things. Um, so uh, I, don't, I don't think it was ill-intended. I don't think the government is even equipped to actually find him like guilty or something like that. But I do think that um, like GDPR and some of the European regula regulations around personal information, what's done with it is going to start to impact the U.S. a lot faster than it would have had he not been called to task and, and taken up there to court. Doesn't, doesn't this all mean that we're, gonna, we're in another place now, in another chapter, where these companies, social media companies, have to give us some comfort, give us uh, uh, some assurance that they're not going to misuse their information, some assurance they're not going to be running away with it and um, you know, getting us in trouble? Um, I think what they're going to do is how to, they're going to try to find a different way to monetize what they do, which means you're going to have to pay for Facebook instead of it being free. Okay, and I think that they're, um, you know, the agreement that you signed to, to let your data be used, I think that people are going to have to be made responsible for that. Um, I think we're going to see quite a bit of pushes in that direction. And then I think how they mask your data is, you know, there's going to be a little more anonymity around it, but the data is still going to be gathered. You know, regardless, I mean, there's just, there's, we're moving into the age of data, data information, big data is what it's all about today, so. And in general, people have forgotten about privacy anyway. When they, you know, provide information to Facebook or anybody else, they're saying, well, I have nothing to hide. I can put this down. It's not going to hurt me. And they willingly, uh, even knowing there's a risk, they put their data down. Isn't that true? Isn't that what happens? Yeah, I mean, I, I think for sure they've been, we've been conditioned Right, and so the the generations that have come up are are totally okay with sharing their information. I just don't know because they're young if they're aware how that information gets used. And I, I don't think any of it's necessarily nefarious. It's actually used by a lot of organizations to uh, enhance your life, to make your life easy, to make it less friction frictionless as you move around the the Ethernet or the internet or whatever it may be. So. Uh, but there are obviously cases like this where there's misinformation used against certain populations or people with certain beliefs, and you know we see the results of that. So um, misinformation's been around a long, long time. Deception's been around a long, long time. So it's just a different way of doing it. And um, hopefully this will bring some awareness to people about how they share that. That open source intelligence world is out there, and it's it's being used by a lot of people. You think this is going to change the industry? Is, you think it's going to call for consolidation or maybe fragmentation of some of these big companies? The emergence of other companies uh, that have a different business model and are more careful with data? Is it going to affect uh, you know, play, uh, Facebook really uh, in any significant way going forward? Well, we saw that it impacted their usership but not their earnings. So I, I would say there's that answer anyway in the near term. Um, Will people try to find other mm -hmm. secure ways to share themselves with groups that are closer that they know? Uh, I think so. I think those are sort of out there now. And I think a lot of people um, anonymize themselves as they go in uh, anyway. So uh, it's hard to say. I mean, I wish I, I wish I had a lens that was that big. But um, I think there's always going to be wolves. And I think there's always going to be sheep. <laughs> there you have it from Andrew Lanning, otherwise known as John Smith. Uh, before you go, tell yes, us about sir. your program on May 15th so we can put some word out on oh, it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to speak at HICTA. We're going to be talking about electronic security, the state of the industry. Um, I've spent a lot of time this year traveling the country for different shows, and I'm going to try to bring back sort of the trends. You know, I um, did about eight presentations there and sat in about 50. So there are some definite things happening in the industry that I think a lot of folks in Hawaii don't get to learn about. So I'm going to go uh, distill that down to the top few points uh, about our people, our processes, and our products in the electronic security industry. And hopefully, the, um, you know, happy to share that. Hopefully, it's something that the community can ingest and uh, find useful going forward. How do I sign up? Uh, Hicta.org. All right. H-I-C-T-A.org. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, sir. We'll talk soon. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. Oh, oh, my God. There's Dave Stevens right over there. 
Look at that. It was a cornucopia of technology <laughs> right here on Fourth Street Mall. Whoa! I was going to do a photo bomb. <laughs> so you guys just had a show together, you and, uh, and Andrew. So can you give me a praise see about what happened? Conspiracy theories about DNA. <laughs> really? Okay, that's that's worth. Uh, after 40 years of looking, they finally think they caught the, the Golden State Killer. And they used DNA evidence. Uh, but collecting DNA evidence on commercially available DNA sites that we've all been using, 23andMe, Ancestry.com, and they used that to help build a profile of the gentleman that they served a warrant to and, and subpoenaed and got uh, arrested, and now they're gathering evidence at his house. So that was a, it was big news. But now that law enforcement is using our DNA to gather evidence and find people, could that be abused? Last year we had on, on uh, the house of the, on the floor of the house, um, at, in Congress, the House of Representatives voted on a bill that they were trying to say corporations could take our DNA and charge us more for medical insurance if we had a profile that said we're going to be more sick over many years. So I, this could be used for good and use, use, be used for bad. So you got to make up your mind whether or not uh, you want to give up your DNA evidence. Uh. Privacy is gone. It's dead. <laughs> I think that Donald Trump said that not too long ago. I completely agree. I don't think there's uh, there's no way to live off the grid, quote unquote, anymore. I mean, even in a cave somewhere. Uh, not that you'd want to do that. There's no Netflix or anything. So I think that it's the age of convenience. And to get convenience, you sign up for things like Facebook. And Facebook is free, but you're the product. You're giving away your data, right? You're giving away. I'd be more careful of giving away my DNA, though. Well, a lot of us do that freely too. 23andMe. You want to find out uh, your genetic. Uh, heritage. I had a lot of surprises in mind, so it was a real fun thing to do. But now that database is out there, so. Okay, there's a word out that uh, you're you're taking an exam, or you're involved in some way in some exams. Uh, can you talk about it? <laughs> yes, yes. I am giving exams. I teach for the University of Hawaii Kapi'olani Community College. I teach cybersecurity. So finals are being next week. Uh, I'm gonna have to give some tests. So that, no, I'm not taking them. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> Would you mind giving us some of the questions so we can get sort of familiar with the way these, these tests work? Uh, no. <laughs> can, you, can you talk about the curve on the test? There is no curve. You heard it here on Think Tank. There is no curve. <laughs> no curve. <laughs> Dave Stevens, KCC. Thank you so much. Aloha. <laughs> we That's going to get out, you know. <laughs> Hey, it's a quiet Friday. I always worry when I see a quiet Friday on the, on the Fort Street Mall because I, I think that everybody went home al already and it's only us guys that are hanging around here on a Friday afternoon. I, I feel very lonesome when I see it quiet like this. Okay. It could be quiet because, you know, there's nothing happening. It could be quiet because it looks like it's going to rain. But it also could be quiet because everybody's going home for some other purpose. So let's walk up a little further and see what we find up here. Yeah. Excuse me, madam. Okay, all right. Excuse me, are you in a position to be able to talk to us? Oh, no, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I always, uh, you can tell. You want to talk to us? Why don't you talk to us? We'll come around. We're going to ask you what you think about additional tax for education. Tax for education. The additional tax they want to charge for education. What do you think? On real property. An additional real property tax for education. When I, I want to ask you how you feel about the schools, about tax, about real property tax. Okay. And if, if that doesn't work, I have another question too I want to ask you. So we never run out of questions here in the Fort Street Mall. So I guess my, my first question is, 
What do you think about an increase in real property tax uh, in order to support the schools? Do we need to do that? Oh, I'm not sure. Probably teachers need to get paid more, but I'm, I don't know. A lot of other st most states do that. Where I grew up, that's what they do. That's how they pay for school stuff, not property tax. So That's true. And m in most states, uh, schools are handled by the counties, not by the state. It's still the tax. I mean, hard, however you look at it, if you're living in that county, you get taxed, and whether you count by the county or state or whatever. So, so you'd be okay with that? Be okay with paying more on real property tax? property probably have more invested in the community so well what about income tax would you take a, an increase in income tax I think there's actually one happening uh, probably not I'd rather have the property tax than the income tax because it, it, uh, it it's, it's a tax on people who are more affluent well it's a tax on the piece of property that's sitting on the land that is paying for the schools my income may not sit on the land, it may be someplace else. Okay, let me ask you another question. You know, we've heard a lot about tourism this year. We've heard that uh, at any one moment there's... Uh, me? Yeah. Uh, originally or oh, now? This? Oh, this is Think Tech Hawaii upstairs. We're a digital media nonprofit. Um, so I guess I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, about tourism in general. Um, are you associated with the tourism industry, the hospitality? Uh, so the question I would put to you is, we have a lot of tourists, more than ever, and we are making more money. The hotels are making more money than they ever were. Um, do you think there ought to be a limit at some point? Do you think that it, it's too much, that, that the, the culture is fragile, and we ought to find a, a place where we say no more? How do you say what, no more tourists? Well, no more increase. Oh, no more increase in, in tourism. How do you do that? I'm, you know, I'm asking you the question. <laughs> I don't have an idea either now that you, yeah. But, I mean, ask me how I would like to, to make uh, uh, gold out of this plant. I would, I'd, I'd love it, but it's not feasible. So you think we ought to let it, let it, let it go the way it goes, a free market? Yeah, what, it, what, it, what is natural? More tourism is good for this place. Um, a lot of them anyways. Okay. Well, I, I suppose, uh, yeah, so it all c comes back to tax. Um, one more question, and that is, uh, are, you, are you concerned about the relationship of the United States and China? Because China's not too happy with uh, these tariffs, and we have a trade war going on right now, and it's escalating, and the people in China are getting ticked off at Americans when a year or two ago they were not ticked off at Americans. They, <laughs> They were pro-American in many ways, but now uh, there's a change happening. What do you think? I don't know. Trade, trade wars aren't good for anybody usually. Tariffs are not good, but I mean, I, I don't know. I've yet, as far as I know, it, had, it has not been implemented. We have talk about doing it, and they've named something, but they haven't implemented it yet. So I don't know. Yeah. Well, we'll see in a few yeah. weeks. If you do, it's probably, probably not a good thing. I'd, don't think those things are ever good. Okay, maybe we'll come down and catch you again in a few weeks and, and follow up with you on further thoughts you might have in the interim. Sure. Thanks very, thanks very much. Okay. okay.